Hello and good evening to all. As you can see the title of this video, today we have gathered uh, here on this YouTube channel to discuss the INICT November 2022 questions asked in psychiatry. Uh, there were two sessions as we all know. So I'll be discussing questions separately of evening session and morning session. Let's start with the morning session first. There were six questions relevant to psychiatry and psychopharmacology that I could recall. Let's discuss one by one. First question was match the column in which students were able to mark easily kleptomania as compulsive stealing. Dipsomania is actually compulsive alcohol intake. Then mutilomania as the name suggests mutilating animals and pyromania is set fire. All these are impulse control disorders where the person is unable to control the urge to carry out an act. Dipsomania is also in the Jelinek classification of alcoholism. We call it Epsilon type of alcoholism. Epsilon. Jelinek has given a classification Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta, Epsilon where de Epsilon is Dipsomania. Okay. Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta, Epsilon. So, Kleptomania, Dipsomania, Mutilomania, Pyromania. Then this is kind of a repeat question. Alcohol withdrawal with auditory hallucination, secondary delusion. Most probably going for delirium. Last intake two days back. Caesar. In alcohol withdrawal, we use benzodiazepine and thiamine. Naltrexone is an uh, anti-craving agent to be used after withdrawal phase is over. Don't start this in withdrawal phase. And flupenthixol being an antipsychotic, in fact, it's a long-acting antipsychotic depot injection, which is not required in this case. And the student was saying there were multiple correct, so the answer should be diazepam and thiamine. The drug of choice for alcohol withdrawal is benzodiazepine, and when the patient has seizures, diazepam is a good anti-epileptic also, and take care of withdrawal seizures as well. Thiamine is required to prevent Wernicke's encephalopathy. Very much doable question, a previous repeat question. Now this question, uh, although uh, the people, uh, the examiner didn't ask the diagnosis, sudden onset blindness, blindness, aphonia, all these are sensory motor symptoms for two hours. Okay, not much concern about the blindness. This sign is called la belle indifference. When the patient is not much concerned uh, while talking about her mother, she always fought instead of loving her. Diagnosis of this case is conversion disorder, where there are acute onset sensory motor neurological symptom after psychological stress. Conversion disorder popularly known as hysteria. It is more common in female, whether it is childhood or whether it is adulthood. In both the cases, conversion disorder is more in females. It's known as hysteria. Hysteria. After an acute precipitating uh, psychosocial stress factor, the person develops sensory motor neurological symptoms. Then lithium, a very very important drug, the blood level was 0.6 to 1.5. Different books have given different uh, this uh, usually 0.8 to 1.2 is acute mania and 0 0.6 to 0 0.8 is maintenance. But the best answer here, actually toxicity starts beyond 1.5. So we will be marking this. As the therapeutic levels 0 0.6 to 1.5. That's the most appropriate options. If they only ask acute mania, you could have marked 1 to 1.3. If they only ask uh, maintenance, you could have marked 0.5 to 0.8. So overall, overall the lithium blood levels, a better answer should be 0.6 to 1.5. Okay, because it covers the whole spectrum of this uh, lithium as a antimanic as well as a mood stabilizer. Again, an alcoholic seizure. LFT are deranged, so we will be using benzodiazepine that love liver. Love liver are only two, lorazepam 
and oxazepam. Actually, a similar question has been asked previously in PGI Chandigarh, where lorazepam was the answer. Similar question was asked in this uh, your aims also. I'll tell you. Actually, benzodiazepine undergo liver metabolism, hepatic glucuronidation and hepatic oxidation. So, this your uh, diazepam and chlorodiazepoxide they undergo both while lorazepam and oxazepam undergo a single mechanism of action so they put less stress on liver so we say a liver friendly benzodiazepine is love liver lorazepam and oxazepam while liver unfriendly benzodiazepine is diazepam and chlorodiazepoxide. So either lorazepam or oxazepam both are liver friendly benzodiazepines. So alcoholic liver disease is very common in alcohol withdrawal. So we prefer lorazepam and oxazepam. When there is no liver disease, we prefer chlorodiazepoxide. Which of the following side effects are seen more with carbamazepine over oxcarbamazepine except rash carbamazepine more than oxcarbamazepine. Again, lorazepam carbamazepine over oxcarbamazepine. Visual side effect carbamazepine over oxcarbamazepine. Only hyponatremia. It is more with oxcarbamazepine over carbamazepine. Dilutional hyponatremia is the only side effect which is more with oxcarb. Otherwise, all the more side effects are more with carbamazepine. Oxcarb is a newer congener. These are the morning session question. In the same video, I would prefer to discuss evening session. As per the students reviews, evening session was a little difficult. Even I felt that out of six question, evening session was more biased towards psychopharma. More questions. Clinical psychiatry hardly one to two question. Let's see. And this is a clinical psychiatry question. Necrophilia, sexual pleasure with dead bodies. Eonism is transvestism when a a uh, male prefer wearing female clothes. Freudianism is rubbing uh, genitals to get orgasm, and exhibitionism is exposed genital to the strangers. So these were all paraphilias. It was a doable question. Now this was a little tough question because I had to search a lot, and I have discussed with many pharmacology faculties of dams and even psychiatry faculties of my friends at other platforms apart from dams and we kind of concluded the answer to be ABCD because I have research evidence of yes ADHD is caused by uh, in infants or in children whose mothers have used uh, SSRI during pregnancy although the reports are less but for the purpose of multiple completion we will include ADHD, APGAR score, delayed motor development and persistent pulmonary hypertension. When this question was first given to me, I answered it as D because the most common is D. But later the students told me, sir, it was a multiple choice correct. So I realized that the best answer should be A, B, C, D rather than only D. If they ask you single best, then the answer should be D. But if they ask you multiple completion type, like multiple correct type, the answer should be A, B, C, D. Got it? Which of the following is not true about disulfiram? We know disulfiram is aldehyde dehydrogenase inhibitor. Alcohol is converted to aldehyde, aldehyde is converted further. So aldehyde dehydrogenase inhibitor, not alcohol dehydrogenase inhibitor. That's why it causes accumulation of acetaldehyde. Yes, the starting dose is this 250 and it is not an anti-craving. Rather, it is a deterrent agent. Deterrent means aversive therapy kinds of repels alcohol it's not anti-craving anti-craving are your acamprosate and naltrexone disulfiram is not an anti-craving agent this was again a doable question and this is a repeat question most of the students marked it correct even i was not getting the other options because varnicline was a straightforward answer in smoking cessation the two main drugs used are varnicline that is alpha 4 beta 2 nicotine partial agonist and your Bupropion. So we are using varanicline as the single best answer. Repeat question doable.
very much smoking suggestion now this question i am still not able to recall the correct options some students were saying none of the above was there some students were saying none of the above was not there everybody was saying people are true about these two options but this option students were saying i have discussed this question on instagram telegram whatsapp groups facebook everywhere they were saying one option was mental tension which is not stress external pressure which is not stress actually what is stress stress is your ability of your body or the way your body reacts to any external pressure or any change in your physical or psychological circumstances for example exam is a situation that happens in your life your body reaction to that situation is called stress like some people take more stress of exam some people take less stress so stress is how your body responds to anything that requires attention or action this is my answer but i'm still yet to get the correct appropriate definition because students have messaged me like one was a long definition second was mental tension third was external pressure and fourth was none of the above out of these four my answer should be a but let's understand the concept of stress stress is body's reaction to any change physical or psychological for example you take stress of your ill health so that's a physical you take stress of your uh, trauma for example you got an injury that's not a psychological thing so a physical situation for example financial loss anything change in your life that makes your body react that reaction is called stress now this is again a psychopharma question last question of evening uh, on antipsychotic not correctly match blockage of d2 receptor in the mesolimbic pathway helps in control of positive symptom yes correct d2 blockage causes control of positive symptom 5ht2a blockage helps in control of negative symptom very well that's why atypical antipsychotic which are serotonergic dopaminergic blockers are better in control of negative symptom as compared to typical which are mainly d2 blockers you know we say typical is d2 atypical is d2 plus 5ht2a that's why typical control positive symptom better atypical control positive and negative symptoms better typical are called dopamine receptor antagonists atypical are called serotonergic dopaminergic agents now 5ht1a no 1a not actually weight gain is due to 5ht2c blockage that's why olanzapine causes more weight gain that's why clozapine causes more weight gain 5ht2c blockage this is a false statement and m1 blockage helps to reduce extra pyramidal side effect you know acetylcholine and dopamine they form a balance so the more potent d2 blocker will be more of cholinergic less of anticholinergic for example haloperidol is more potent d2 blocker as compared to acetyl uh, muscarinic blocker while chlorpromazine is more potent acetylcholinergic blocker as compared to d2 that's why it has more eps and this has less eps owing to a strong anti muscarinic properties the more stronger muscarinic blocker lesser is the d2 potent blocker here it is hence the drugs that are m1 blockers helps to reduce eps d2 blocker in the nigrostriatal pathway is the major reason of extra pyramidal side effects so again this is a true statement got it so these were all the questions and answers i hope i was able to do a decent recall if you still have any questions comments queries please get back to me i'll be more than happy to hear from you thank you bye bye